Welcome back folks to a brand new video. So in this video, we're gonna check out some underrated gems. But for those of you going on holiday this year, you might wanna try some of these locations. So let's take a look at 10 beautiful, less touristy places to visit in Europe. And before you even watch this video, don't forget to hit that like button because it is free. First up is Ljubljana. Slovenia's capital and largest city. It's known for its university population and lots of lots of green areas, including the expansive Tivoli Park. So Slovenia gets a little left out, often overlooked by tourists choosing to visit Croatia, Italy, or even Austria instead. Yet the country does seem like it's right out of a fairy tale. And if you're planning a trip to Slovenia, you simply must spend some time in the city's charming capital. Part of why the city is such a wonderful place to visit is because of the architectural works of Jose Plejnik, of Jose Plejnik. So make sure you visit many of his buildings and his projects as much as you can while you're there. And another plus point is, just an hour and 20 minute away, lies the fabulous Lake Bled. Number two, and see. Venice tops many travel lists, and obviously for good reason. Yet with sky-high visitor numbers, Venice's over-tourism is becoming an ever more important issue, not just for Italy, but for the sake of sustainable tourism itself. But to really give Venice's structure and its locals a break, consider a trip to Annecy, France instead. This small French town sits against the backdrop of the Alps, which peek over the roofs of the colourful 16th century houses, all lining the canals. And come the summer, it's certainly busier, but there's plenty of room to enjoy even a coffee at Le Barista Café. Or you can hire a small boat, soak up the uninterrupted news, no elbow jostling or tiptoeing viewing required. Next up is Tolaro, Italy. Perched on a hill along the Ligurian coast is the picturesque fishing village of Tolaro. Its coloured buildings worn by the sun and the sea cocoon the small harbour that opens into the ocean. It's ranked as one of the most beautiful villages in Italy, and you can see why it's been a lure for poets and artists looking for inspiration over the centuries. So when you first get to Tolaro, you'll find a maze of tiny little lanes and passageways that simply tempt you to explore. And with the town being so small, you won't get lost for long, as you'll soon find yourself back in the piazza or down by the little harbour. And after a few days, you'll know and you will really enjoy every nook and cranny of this town. Number four, Simi. Now this 
is one of those precious gems in the Dodecanese island group. The colourful architecture of its villages is one of the island's highlights, with postcard-like mansions popping up as soon as you start to approach the port. The beaches have crystal clear waters and plenty and plenty of secluded areas for those of you who just want to get away. Monschau A town in western Germany near the Belgian border. So anyone who likes city breaks, this could be a very interesting one for you to visit this year. It's known for its medieval centre, with half-timbered houses and of course the famous narrow cobblestone streets. Now the most characteristic thing about Monschau are probably the idyllic and the historical houses that are all located in the old town, as the old town itself is an attraction. But you can also wander around the outside of the castle, which was built in the 13th century. But not only at the castle of Monschau are where you can enjoy some magnificent views, because there's actually another place where you can see from the images on the map. Number 6. The Outer Hebrides, Scotland Off the west coast of Scotland, the Isle of Lewis and the Isle of Harris form the main island in the Outer Hebrides. Now they may sound like two separate islands, but Lewis and Harris are actually two parts of the one island, with the largest town Stornoway on the east coast. So probably the most famous site on the Isle of Lewis are the Standing Stones. And located on the west coast of Lewis, the stones date back to the Neolithic Age, meaning that they are about 5,000 years old. So the Standing Stones consist of a main stone circle. So this is a really out of the way location if you're visiting Scotland. So if you're looking for unspoiled beaches, a diverse landscape in such a small area, and to walk, cycle or hike in beautiful countryside, then this is the place you need to visit. Nestled within a remote corner of southern Italy, this city is definitely one of the most unique and spectacular destinations for you to check out this year. Abandoned caves, ancient neighbourhoods, and a series of limestone grottos, baroque churches, and even more caves. So Matera still has that little air of being undiscovered. You can roam through the labyrinth of narrow cobblestone streets and the uneven staircases. So it's a perfect location for you just to wander and get lost. Regarded as the shame of Italy in the 1950s, since then, the extraordinary environment has now been recognised as a European capital of culture. So, out of all the places in Italy that you could go this year, this might be a good option. Number 5. Maastricht 
This city is the perfect place to go if you loved Amsterdam but don't want to get sucked into the tourist traps of a huge capital city again. Some of the best food in the area can surprisingly be found in the student-geared restaurants that cater to an international crowd. For example, when morning comes around, you can browse books and get your caffeine fix at a former church that's now used as a bookstore, all complete with a coffee shop inside. You can also check out the Maastricht Underground, which is a walking tour of the city's underground caves. So if you're looking for a new city to visit, you should consider Maastricht. Number 9. Segovia Now there are plenty of underrated cities in Europe and I have to say Segovia in Spain is one of them. Its location is not so far away from Madrid, so a roughly around an hour by bus, but it's as different from Madrid as it can be. Surrounded by pretty high mountains covered in snow in winter, its architecture is very special. A huge aqueduct in the city centre and a castle which somewhat resembles the Disneyland castles you see today. And its old medieval streets with plenty of beautiful churches and cathedrals. So the good thing about Segovia is once you get there, you will start to feel like it's an open air museum. The city just doesn't look like a real one at all. And it kind of resembles a huge mock-up of what a fabulous medieval city would have been in the past. Number 10. Pula. Now this one is going to be very interesting. It's the largest city of Croatia's Istria County, located at the southern tip of the peninsula. Now its architecture is mainly Roman inspired, as Istria was conquered by the Romans in 177 BC. So people around the world visit Pula for its historical attractions, and one being the famous Roman amphitheatre. Or the Temple of Augustus, located in the town's main square. So why visit Rome, which is going to be so busy, and you can come right here? And once you do visit Pula, there's actually another hidden gem, the picturesque town of Vodnia, which is located just north of Pula and home to roughly 6,000 people. It's quaint, full of winding streets, and again, very Italianate in its architecture. But what you will find there are wonderful displays of street art, which makes it a very interesting, and as I said, a hidden gem. Please remember to get a hotel in Pula before heading to Vodnan, as there are no hotels in that town. And there you have it folks, those were some interesting yet underrated gems in Europe today. For more videos, for more destinations, check out the links and the playlists on the channel. And I'll see you all on the next one. As always, be good, be kind, and be careful. Peace.